Justin Trudeau, the Canadian Prime Minister. This guy is unbelievable. Recent comments that he made. I mean, are the people really buying this? I can't think that they are, but maybe they are. We'll, we'll talk about it in great detail. Stick with me, guys. First, if you could, please like this video, share it, hit the bell, subscribe, wear the glasses because I'm blind. So everything that we've seen in Canada over the course of the past couple of weeks, the Freedom Convoy, the truckers, everything, all they wanted to do was to bring attention to the fact that they wanted these mandates to end. Everything with the virus. Now, I said before that this whole protest was ultimately going to fail. And I was correct. And, well, what followed from that was not even something that, that really that I saw was going to go to the extent that it did. And that is when Justin Trudeau had enacted the Emergencies Act, which had never been used before. And this basically gave him the power to be a full-blown tyrant. Martial law. Canada turns into a police state. I mean, unprecedented. You know, he was even condemned, and this was, I saw an article about this, and I had to be like, what? Even a country like Iran came out and condemned Trudeau for what he was doing to his people. A country in Iran that, well, does the same thing to their protesters, okay, beats them in the streets and basically says that, no, we're not going to listen to anything that you have to say. Even they come out and condemn Trudeau. Australia came out and condemned Trudeau, which Australia is a, is a, is a tyrannical country now in their own right. But did Biden or anybody in, in the United States say anything about this? No, they were silent. They didn't condemn it at all. So you have the United States not condemning this and Iran is? <laughs> Tells you a lot, doesn't it? So what did we see with this? We saw the accounts of the protesters, the bank accounts being frozen. Justin Trudeau denied, you know, these protesters the ability to, uh, to uh, you know, receive bail, get themselves out of prison. They were trampled in the streets by horses, pulled from their vehicles, had their windows smashed in these trucks, police pulling the drivers out of the cars. They had, at one point, they threatened to euthanize their pets. Any trucker, any protester that was arrested for their mischievous acts, and if there was a pet left behind, well, then the Canadian government had every right to then take your pet and euthanize it. <laughs> but then, the comments made by Trudeau just the other day. Comical yet sad, and I saw this, I mean, I got fired up when I saw this, and I, I'll go into it in just a second, guys. First, let me mention, if you guys are able to make a generous donation here to my ministry to help support what I do, I greatly appreciate that. I'm demonetized on YouTube. They don't support me, but you guys can help out in a major way if you enjoy the daily content I put out talking about end time Bible prophecy headlines, and you wanna send a message to YouTube saying, you know what, you may not support what he does, but we enjoy his content. You can help me out over on PayPal. I have that link for you down below. Or you can sign up on Patreon. When you do that, you get access to my bonus content. Plus, I include links to the YouTube videos there so you get all the alerts when the new content arrives. You can also comment there. Censorship-free, semi-direct messages. These videos, guys, also go out on my Rumble platform. So check that out. It also kind of serves as a backup in case I get the boot from YT. So all those links are down below for you. A big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Now, after all the blockades were cleared, and, you know, it was funny because it was on Monday that Parliament had actually voted to extend the Emergencies Act. Trudeau said at the time that it was still needed because he had heard murmurings of other pockets of, of truckers that were, you know, supposedly going to be, you know, invoking more of these blockades around the border area between Canada and the United States. So he thought that it most definitely needed to be remaining in place. And let's also not forget all the names that he called these protesters, okay? 
horrible names. Of course, call them. You know, I don't care. I'm not even gonna get. I'm not even getting. He calls them. You know, the, the N word, not that N word, but the other N word. Uh, you know, call them racists and all this other stuff. You know, the usual words that we hear. Even his own parliament said that if they did not vote alongside of him to extend this, well, then they were the same thing as all those protesters were. Okay. Again, they get you with the words because nobody wants to be labeled with any of this. You know, God forbid people stand up and, you know, and say, look, I don't care what you want to call me. You can call me whatever you want. I'm going to tell you this is wrong. But no, they're too afraid of being, you know, having a label put on them. So they cower in fear, which is sad. So they go ahead and extend the powers. But then that lasts for two days. By Wednesday, Trudeau says, okay, we can, we can lift this now. We don't need the Emergencies Act in place any longer. After we've already done all this damage to all of our people, treated them like dogs, beat them in the streets, froze their bank accounts, denied them bail, just basically threatened them with arrest if they were even on the streets of Ottawa. No. Now, Trudeau comes out and he gives this, gives this message to the country says that it's been a rough two years for Canada, which by the way, I'll put this clip for you down below and you can check it out. It's been a rough two years for Canada. A lot has happened and we need to focus now on healing. And this is the line that got me. We have to remember, Trudeau said, that we're fighting a virus, not each other. And it's time that Canadians start to be there for one another. <laughs> We're fighting a virus, huh? Anybody who believes that, you need to have your head seriously examined. If after everything that happened in Canada did not wake you up at this point, then nothing ever will. A vi fighting a virus, right. Fighting a virus. Now Trudeau is all of a sudden a man of peace. We need to come together, be there for one another. We're not fighting each other. Ignore all those horrible things I said about you. Ignore the fact that I basically hate all of you in my country. I hate all of you Canadian people. Forget all I forget all of that. Forget the fact I froze your bank accounts and I pulled you out of the trucks and I threatened to euthanize your dogs, make your life completely miserable. We're fighting a virus here. That's what this is all about. We need to be there for each other. We're not here to fight each other, yet you authorize your police to basically have free reign with these people in the streets, beat them down, humiliate them. But it's a virus, ladies and gentlemen. Remember this, this world was brought to its knees by the common cold, brought to its knees that easily, that easily. This is by no means, uh, means that this is, Canada's gonna go back to freedom. No, no. They enacted this once, they can do it again. Let's not forget the persecution that was happening with Christians and pastors in Canada long before this emergency act was ever put into place by Trudeau. I mean, Pastor Arter Pelosky, I mean, I've reported on him several times since this whole thing started two years ago, almost now to this point, but not just Arter Pelosky being put in prison for simply wanting to hold church services. There was countless other pastors that I reported on in Canada as well. This is a country that has been falling for some time now. It just, this was the exclamation point on all of it here. Are, are, are the borders open? Do you are, are you able to get across the border between Canada and the United States now without showing proof of a jab? No. They didn't drop those mandates. I said this. It was going to ultimately fail because these rulers do not care about your protest. Because the thing is, you're protesting against devils. You're protesting demons. They don't care. You can hold your sign and you can say, you know, we want, you know, mandate free, whatever it may be. Instead of protesting these tyrants you need, and these demons, you need to be petitioning God. You need to be on your knees in prayer to him daily that he will intervene in your situation and he will make a way for you. Even if the tyrants don't drop their mandates, maybe for you something happens. I don't know. You're able to get across this, this border. 
cross the border or your job is able to, you know, you can work without having to show proof of the jab, whatever it may be, you need to learn to go to the Lord in these times. He's the one to go to. Don't go to your gut. Don't, don't protest to them. They don't care. They'll stomp you out just like what happened in Canada. They shut that down like I said they would because it was the wrong approach. God bless the people and the fact that they did what they, they thought they had to do. But it was the wrong approach. It was the wrong method. Now, maybe they'll see this now. And, you know, I hope people, ultimately, they repent for their sins and come to Christ. But they handle this in a different way. This is a spiritual battle. You have to wage that in prayer daily, praying in the Holy Ghost, really seeking after God when it comes to this. Because these times that we're in right now are going to be some of the darkest days that we've ever seen. And we need to remember that as we move forward. This is not the end for Canada. I mean, Trudeau, he's not done. He's not done. This can go back into place at any time. At any time. A new variant comes along, bam, right back in there again. Now they know. They got a little bit more of a taste of that true dictator power. I mean, they already had the mandates in place. They already had the power before. But this was the next step. They leveled up. And they liked it. So just keep that in mind. Look, we never want to end any video here without giving people the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So if that's you, if you're watching this video right now and you've yet to receive Christ into your life, I want to lead you in a prayer right now to get you to do just that. This is a prayer you can do in your own words, but I'll give you the steps that you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing that you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you're a sinner. It's something that we all are, but God gave his only son. Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from your sin, not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from lifestyles, habits, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. You ask Jesus to forgive you. He wipes that sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I'll have more on this for you guys down below. You can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk. We'll be soon.